Hello and welcome to the Ecom Ops podcast. My name is Norbert, and today I'm talking with Yitz, right? Yes, you got yes. it. Yes, that, that that's 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 hard to pronounce. So <laughs> hope hope that's right. Um, no, it is. And and Yitz, hey, welcome. And and he's um um uh, co-founder of Pay. Also right. <laughs> That is also That's right. cool. So pay offers a frictionless payment authentication, um, an extra layer of security. And I think this is exactly what we currently need in e-commerce and, and for every kind of payment process. Um, tell us a bit more about yourself. So my background is not in payments. I like to joke that if I knew what I was getting into before I got into this, I never would have done it. But I'm happy I didn't because I never would have done it. Uh, my background was in the finance world. I did mostly mortgages, um, started pay um, a few years ago when I was actually looking to solve a friction at checkout pain point. And then I started to learn a little bit more about um, merchants that their main pain points in the e-commerce world were not as much friction as it was that they were liable for fraud. Their authorization rates were generally lower than um, than their brethren in the um, brick and mortar world. So um, I looked to see if I could figure out a way to solve that, you know, those pain points. And, you know, that's eventually how um, pay came about. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And, and, and what do you do with pay? So what pay does is uh, probably the simplest way to describe it is we um, allow the facilitation of significantly more data to be passed um, during transaction um, from merchants to credit card issuers. Um, by doing that, it allows the issuers to determine in real time if it's the cardholder um, that's actually making the transaction. And then, um, and if they are, what it does, it has two benefits. One is they assume the issuer assumes the liability for fraud in the event um, there is a chargeback. And then on top of that, it also increases their authorization rates that merchants should see. Mm -hmm. And when do I come to you and 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 and, and get a subscription with Pay? Um, so. We generally recommend as soon as you start your um, e-commerce website, you should be looking to add pay to your website. Um, you know, predominantly with the 1.0 version of, of we, we, we use what's called 3D Secure, which is a protocol that's created by um, the card brands. And um, the 1.0 version really had only one benefit, which was the liability shift. So there was merchants that were seeing a lot of chargebacks on the fraud side, especially on the friendly fraud. Um, that were utilizing it. So generally when they would see a lot of chargebacks, um, they would then come to us and they would implement this on their website. Um, now, um, because you know with 2.0, it doesn't just help on the liability side, it also increases the authorization. It's something you should, you should put on your website immediately. Mm -hmm. And what if, if, if I have something like Stripe already? Um, can I put it on top or, or how does this um, work? Yes, yeah, so you can, um, if you're using their hosted payment form, it's a little bit more complicated, um, but generally um, we, we are agnostic. So we work with, uh, we're payment, we're processor agnostic, um, platform agnostic, um, acquire agnostic. So we, we work with pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yes, how, how did you get first into e-commerce? So I had this idea we are um, I loved shopping online but I hated the checkout experience so I had this idea where you basically have an app on your phone where you store your credit cards and shipping addresses yeah and then from there um, what we what I did was imagine you're sitting at your desktop uh, the pain points I hated that was I add something to my shopping cart and then I have to enter my billing information my shipping um, so with with this all you had to do was we have this little plug-in where you threw in your phone number and it's sent to push notification um, to your mobile phone. And then from there, you confirm that transaction. Um, and that was, that was the initial um, product that we, we tried launching to market. And then eventually we realized that um, the pain points that merchants were seeing were the, you know, that they were, they're all card not present. So a lot of the rules that were created around card present, card not present were created like 50, 60 years ago, when in those days, the concept of a card not present meant if I was a merchant, I was either taking a payment over the phone or the cardholder didn't have the card with them when they were coming into the store to buy it. And it made up a very small percentage of transactions. So the, the rules were card present, lowest risk. It's the issuing banks that are liable for fraud. Merchants pay the lowest, um, what's called interchange or processing fees. And um, their authorization rates were usually in the high 98% um, range. Uh, card not present were inherently riskier transactions 
So they wanted to dissuade merchants from accepting it. So A, they saw lower authorization rates. And on top of that, if there was fraud on it, uh, merchants were liable for it. Um, and they never even thought about e-commerce. It wasn't even an inkling of an idea in those days. Um, fast forward to the 90s and suddenly um, e-commerce st starts to take off. And uh, merchants are in a, in a situation where they couldn't do a card present in that environment, even if they wanted to. And um, ultimately, um, they saw two big problems. One was fraud. Um, and majority of the fraud that people see are not people stealing cards. It's what they call friendly fraud. It's where some, someone actually buys something and claims they never authorize it. Um, so that's a friendly fraud because the transaction is legitimate. The fraud is when they call up and claim they didn't make a transaction, excuse me, that they actually did. Um, the other thing um, was the authorization rates dropped generally from where it was 98% in the, you know, in, in card present to, you know, it could drop by 10, 15% um, easily um, in the, in the e-commerce world. And it all, it's all related to fraud where these issuers were flagging transactions that were actually legitimate as fraud and therefore declining those transactions. Um, and that's, you know, that's, and we saw these pain points were something that merchants were seeing on a daily basis. And, you know, we tried to solve some of those pain points. And the original version that we had um, was a 3DS 1.0, which we baked into our original product. And then we realized that hack that we did for ourselves can work for all e-commerce merchants. And then, you know, um, so we pivoted and that's what we've been focused on doing. That's cool. Um, how, how does your business model work, um, by the way? So how do you earn money? Um, so we are more of a wholesaler than a retailer. So we don't sell as much direct to merchant as we sell to, ch we do channel sales. So we sell to um, payment service providers, charge rec mitigation companies, CRMs, gateways, people that already have relationships with these merchants around their payment stack. Um, and, you know, small, medium sized merchants don't generally have the internal bandwidth to make a lot of these decisions on their own. So they're outsourcing it to a partner like this. So we sell it to them and then they're usually retailing it, you know, at a little bit of a premium um, to merchants. Okay, nice. Um, you, you have a lot of experience with, with those payments. How, how uh, or, or what is the impact that chargebacks can have on e-commerce businesses? Oh, so, I mean, it depends on the type of industry. Yep. Some of them, it can be massive. It can impact their bottom line by 20, 30%. Oh, um, there, there's a couple of things that happens. First of all, if you have too many charge, chargebacks, you can actually, uh, you risk losing your merchant account, which will obviously shut down the business. Um, on top of that, if you are, are in the high risk, um, the rates you're paying are generally much higher um, than industry average. Um, you also pay a chargeback fee. So typically when you know someone disputes a charge for fraud, The merchants out the money, um, they're out the item. There's usually anywhere from a $20 to $50 chargeback fee on top of it. Um, so the impact to the merchants, you know, are, are significant. Um, if you're if you're in the even medium risk um, industries, and you'd be surprised, some of these industries are are not what you would think as high risk, but because they're in the e-commerce business, um, they suddenly become high risk. Uh, a good example of that is a furniture company. Yep. In the brick and mortar world, they don't really see a lot of uh, a lot of chargebacks. In the e-commerce world, you know, because it's card not present, they're big ticket items. They usually have very strict return policies. Um, they generally see a lot more chargebacks because uh, consumers feel like there's no other way they're going to win. So if they just say they never authorized the transaction, they're hiding behind the keyboard. It's easy for them to you know uh, deny they ever made that transaction, um, and they'll get their money back. Yeah, and and of course, um, what what I've seen uh, personally from a client, um, when you are in the in the electronic world, so uh, selling cell phones, uh, TVs, notebooks, and all this kind of stuff that is uh, really interesting for 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 people to 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 make a fraud or or something. Um, so they they given their credit cards, um, the product is sent. Uh, it has quite some 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 price uh, that they will get delivered, and then it's of course interesting to um, get the money back uh, yeah. at some point. And and there it's really risky. I think um, especially the the more expensive the product is, the more important it is that you have uh, some some mechanisms like this implemented. Yeah, and and the biggest problem is a lot of those type of you know, especially on the friendly fraud side, there's nothing that the merchants can really do to prevent it. 
because everything about the transaction is legitimate. It's a, it's a legitimate buyer making a legitimate purchase, signing for it to legitimately. The fraud is when they're calling up and claiming they never ordered that computer that they actually did. Um, yeah. And, you know, so even the most sophisticated fraud detection tools won't stop it. It's all related to the rules around, you know, on who's, who's liable for fraud, um, you know, in the card not present world. And if you think about it, um, it's not a problem that merchants in the brick and mortar world have to, you know, deal with. Like they don't spend a dollar really um, on fraud prevention in the sense that if you use a stolen credit card, they ultimately don't care because they're not paying for it. But you yep. suddenly you have an e-commerce site and, you know, merchants are spending billions of dollars a year on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's really um, a, a, hard, a hard pill for, um, for a merchant if you're affected by such fraud things. Uh, and typically they don't come alone. Um, uh, typically you have some people that are doing the same thing on your side um, yeah. and, and, and infecting your business. How yep. important is it for an e-commerce um, owner or for, for, for operations people to get their payment processing right? Um, listen, that's the most important part of any um, part of the business because yep. ultimately um, that, that impacts conversions you know, um, the most. So if, you're, if you don't have the right type of payment processing in place, um, that's going to hurt your, you know, your, both your top line and bottom line. Yeah. Uh, so it's something that merchants, they don't realize how, how much harder it actually is in the e-commerce world than in the, than in the brick and mortar world. Yeah. And what, what do you think? What are the three, the top three pieces of uh, e-com payments related advices that you could give to our audience? Um, you need three or you need one? Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> three. Uh, so I, I, would, I would say that um, for starters, you know, merchants in general um, should really play an active um, uh, role in, in trying to uh, keep those chargebacks down. Because those are the things that you can wake up one day and, you know, suddenly you lost your merchant account and it could take days or weeks for you to get that back up and running. So keeping those um, mids very healthy is, is extremely, extremely important. And um, the second thing is I would say to have a robust um, fraud prevention suite of tools. There shouldn't just be one um, one size fits all solution. You know, there are multiple different options you can use out there to keep your chargebacks down. Um, and it's not just related to fraud. It's also just, you know, all different types of chargebacks. There are a lot of great tools out there that you can use. Um, and the third thing is I'd probably say um, add a human element, element to it. Um, one of the biggest things that prevents a lot of friendly fraud um, is when there is some human interaction between the cardholder or customer and, and the merchant. Um, a lot of times when they never deal with any, any person, right, and everything's being done behind the keyboard, um, it's a lot easier for them to go and just dispute the charge because they ultimately don't think of the merchant as a human. Um, as soon as you add a human element to it, um, they're suddenly, uh, they're, they're a little bit more reluctant to it. Even just picking up the phone and having a conversation with them um, generally causes them to, to think twice before, before the, um, issuing a chargeback. That's a good thing. Would you say that um, a chat is also uh, sufficient to, to, to get people? Or do you think phone is more better to, to really have a call with people, especially in the high ticket sales? Uh, you could, listen, it, it's very hard for you to have when, when in high ticket sales to, to make a human connection um, and pick up the phone to every single one of your um, customers. But adding some human element to it when you're having a chat um, automatically allow, um, lets them think that there's someone actually behind the keyboard um, on the other side and, and makes them think twice about it. So yeah, yeah. You, can even, you can even succeed doing it on the chat side. Cool. Um, now we have sorted out the pay payment part. Um, once that is sorted out, what is the next most important aspect that an e-commerce business should improve? What do you think? Um, I'd probably say customer service, <laughs> yeah. um, especially in today's um, times where um, in the e-commerce world, it's as busy as ever. Um, oh, it is. Yeah, the, the customer service aspect goes a long way. And I think people will be a lot more forgiving knowing, um, you know, how transparent and, and you know, and, and how well um, a merchant, you know, does on their customer service side. 
Uh, even Amazon, whose business had, you know, had always been predicated on, on the customer experience, um, they ran into some hiccups along the way, you know, during COVID. And some of it obviously was keeping up with the volume, but a lot of that um, opened up um, the door for other merchants to really step in and, you know, and take some of that market share away um, because um, consumers were looking for something where they were, they were, where they were getting treated um, they would when you walk into a store. Uh, and they were craving that, you know, customer experience that you get in a store um, on a website. Yeah, absolutely. I can fully agree to that, um, especially customer support uh, <clears throat> is something that um, can, 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 can make the decision about a good or bad business. Um, if you are not there for your customers and you see it um, when you order at some huge marketplaces like on Amazon or so, if, if, if you write to the support, you have directly an answer um, and, and you really get um, that help. And we are expecting that already. So we as the consumers, we're expecting that. Um, if, if, even if it's hard to achieve such, a, let's call it good support, um, uh, we need to at least try to aim to get there to really have nearly a real-time answer because the user is really expecting that and it's hard for those smaller companies that come in um yes tell me who has taught you the most about e-commerce in your career uh that's a very good question um <laughs> i love the question i ask it every time <laughs> does it have to be an individual or it's mm. uh well, I had Google as well as an answer. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a lot of it have been I've been I've been learning um, more from the different card brands and the interactions. And I'd probably say my customers most of all. Um, just talking to them and hearing their pain points and their mm -hmm. experiences. Um, and it, it's interesting. While we only really deal on the authentication side and helping them really on the fraud side. Um, they give you really keen insight and, and they're constantly discussing all aspects of their business with you. Um, so when you have those relationships, I'd probably say my customers have taught me the most um, that I've learned. And over the three, four years that we've been doing this, um, they're probably the single biggest reason um, or source of my knowledge. Cool. Thank you very much. It was <clears throat> a pleasure to talk to you and uh, to learn a bit about payment fraud and how to save your payments and don't get so many chargebacks. Um, I really think that <clears throat> this is the right approach and um, I have seen it for so many clients in the e-commerce world that this is important. Um, I think every store owner that has a significant um, order volume has to deal with exactly these problems um, every day. And, uh, and I think to to have a software that, that helps us to uh, prevent fraud um, is really something that we should look at, especially nowadays um, and in this uh, COVID um, uh, time when, when uh, we have much more volume on e-commerce sales. Um, and I think also the fraud is, is something that um, is increasing. And therefore, uh, I wish you good luck. Um, thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you, Norbert. I appreciate it. Really enjoy the conversation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.